Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 2D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanis. We have finished our first series in 2D prototyping, and some of you uh, might be thinking, oh no, there's no more videos coming. <laughs> there are, don't worry. I did not upload anything last week, uh, and that's simply because my students, I'm basically waiting now for my students to finish their games. They're supposed to hand in their games this week. My plan is to have a cross-section of games available to show you guys uh, to see exactly what they did, what my real-life students did in class. That's what I'm hoping to do. Now. Uh, I don't want to go too long without uploading something, so I'm going to make an extra special bonus video right now. Uh, some of the someone actually asked me how hard it would be to make a Minecraft clock, and I made one right here. It's very very simplistic. I'm going to go over the build of this Minecraft clock for you guys, and then you can build it uh, for yourselves. Uh, later on, I think I might take this project and maybe we'll use it to uh, create an iOS or an Android version, so we can see how to to. Um, to be able to compile things for the different uh, different uh, mediums, rather than just for PC like we did in the last episode, our last series. After that, guys, we'll be starting a brand new series. It's going to be a, a series on 3D uh, prototyping. Um, I'll be following along two classes, a procedural animation class and a special effects class that I will be teaching at George Brown, at George Brown College. Uh, so, uh, guys, look forward to that. Don't worry, there's a lot of stuff still coming. All right, let's get started in our extra special bonus video right now. Okay, guys, so we're going to build a very simplistic Minecraft clock here. We're going to build a very simplistic thing. Uh, we're not actually going to go through and rebuild the entire project. You can look at the earlier series we did to see how a project's made. It's a simple 2D project. All right, same as we did with the initial series. Uh, the clock itself, uh, we're just going to take a look. I'm not going to rebuild the entire thing either. I'm just going to show you what I did. It's extremely simplistic to do. Honestly, guys, to do prototypes in Unity, it's very, very fast and very, very easy. Uh, a couple of, of series, you watch a few series of mine or, or someone else's series on YouTube, and you will start to get the hang of it very, very quickly. I promise. It's not difficult. So what we're going to build today is this standalone uh, Minecraft uh, clock. And uh, later on, I'm hoping to be able to use this maybe for, for explaining how... Uh, you know, iOS or Android uh, compiles work as well. So, but for now, we're just going to simply make a simple uh, standalone clock for PC or for Mac. Uh, and basically, all it does, it tells real time. All right. If you get used to looking at this, you'll look at it and say, "I know what time it is." Uh, and if not, for the first little while, if you're having a hard time, I've set it up so if you click on the anywhere in the interface, it's going to show you the actual date and the actual time. So today is the 12th, uh, and it is currently 9:48 in the morning. Uh, it doesn't show seconds right now. I'm not updating it per second. I'm only updating it uh, per minute. And that's really, with a clock like this, that's all you really are going to care about. To be honest, you're going to care about an approximate time because you're never going to get the exact time out of something like this. Uh, but anyway, this is what our, our, our end goal is. Okay, uh, And like I said, it will update each minute and this thing here will slowly rotate over time and it will go throughout the day. If, and it's going to be based on the actual time of your local system. All right, that's how it's working. It's based on the, on the local system time. Okay, and we'll take a look at that later on. We'll take a look at the code to see how I did it. First of all, let's take a look at the project itself. If I go in here to Unity, uh, it's very very simple. Um, I went through in my assets folder. I created three uh, other folders uh, for me. That's how I like to do it. Uh, I create the folders that I require in order to be able to organize my project appropriately. And in this case here, I have a fonts folder, a scripts folder, and a textures folder. And that's really all we're going to require. We don't require prefabs or anything else. Uh, all we require is those three things. Now, fonts, and you don't even require fonts if you don't want it. Fonts. I ended up going into uh, into defonts.com. It's either defont or defonts. I think it's defonts. D-A-F-O-N-T-S.com. And there are a ton of different fonts in there that are available for, for non-commercial or even commercial use for that matter. Um, this is non-commercial for me. I'm just doing this as an example. Uh, and I downloaded Minecraftia. Uh, and I used that in the, uh, in the actual text down here. All right. Uh, so if you want to do that, all you have to do is download your font and place it into your assets folder in some location. Uh, I'm placing it in the font so I can always find it. And if I click on here, what does it show me? Not really a whole lot. Uh, all you have to really do is oh, put it in place, and that's all that is required to be able to utilize it. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. 
Um, scripts, we've only got a single script, and we'll take a look at that in a little bit. And textures, I've got a number of different textures in here. Well, I've got two, to be honest. Uh, or sprites, I should say, not textures. I've got an icon that I've created, and the icon is simply so that the, the end uh, executable's got itself an icon that will be used. Um, and I've got an actual download of the uh, of the Minecraft clock, and I can't remember exactly where I got this, uh, but all it really is is a simple. Uh, we can look at it over. Let's look at it over here. It's it's two parts. Um, well, it is two parts now. It's actually a single part like this. It's got a uh, the top face of the clock, and it's got the interior of the clock. All right, and there there are two two separate things. If we take a look at the top node right here, it's set to sprite multiple. And as soon as you bring this in, as soon as you bring this into your into your uh, textures folder, wherever you're putting it, in in version 5.2 or greater, it should automatically break it up into multiple sprite mode. If not, all you got to do is set it to multiple sprite node sprite mode. Excuse me. Hit the sprite editor, and you can just simply say um, slice, and you can slice it automatic. All right, and the automatic slice is going to be good enough. Uh, this is not a this is not a sprite sheet or anything like that, so there's not nothing like that's required to be able to go through and uh, like whatever size they they slice it is perfectly fine. All right, once it's been sliced. Uh, I've got two different uh, images here, and all I did is I dragged each one onto the canvas, onto the actual scene view. And I dragged the first one on, and that gave me the this one here, the clock face, the exterior, uh, and I renamed it clock face. And all it is is a transform node and a sprite renderer. I don't need anything else for that. It is just uh, there for aesthetics, no other reason at all. I then dragged on this MC clock dash one, and uh, I dragged it on the scene, and it became the clock time. I renamed it clock time. And once again, all that was there was the transform node and the sprite renderer. Uh, I ended up ultimately adding this keep time script, and we'll discuss that in uh, just a few seconds. Uh, and basically, all I did is line them up. I lined it up so that the the clock face was on top of clock time, and that clock time was centered appropriately within the actual uh, clock face. That's all I did. Nothing else was required other than other than to set my clock time. I did set a Z rotation. If we see, I've got it rotating like this. Um, I did set a Z rotation of 180, and that was to ensure uh, that is zero. That's midnight, zero 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 time. All right, that's at zero 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 time. So I set the clock up so that it was rotated to midnight, basically, uh, and then I based my script on the fact that my clock starts at midnight. Okay. Now, to add a, add a component, all we do is we simply say add component, and we added a brand new C sharp script. Now, before we look at the script, let's take a look at the canvas. It's the last thing that we've got down here. The canvas itself is obviously the canvas is required in order to have a, a GUI or a UI available to us. It is the backbone of the UI. It's basically the envelope that holds the rest of our UI. And our, our UI is relatively simplistic. We've got ourselves a button, uh, and inside of the button we have ourselves a text. All right, And that's all we really got. The button itself later on is going to be activated uh, through the use of our clock time. Uh, and our clock time has on it the keep time uh, script, which we're going to take a look at right now. And the keep time script is going to actually uh, go through and, and do everything we want to do on our GUI as well. All right, so let's take a look at this script itself. The script is relatively simplistic. It's only a handful of lines of code. Uh, when you first bring it in, it's going to be have the public class keep time mono behavior, as long as you named it keep time. Uh, it's going to have the start function like this, and it's going to have the update function, nothing else really. The very first line of code that you're going to add is you're going to add this using Unity Engine.ui. And the reason why you're going to add that is it gives us access to the, uh, to the UI functionality directly through scripts right here. And basically what we want to do is we want to be able to, um, uh, basically what we want to do is, is set our text appropriately. That's all we're really going to do with this in this script. All right. Now let's take a look at the variables that were added. First of all, there was a public text display text. Uh, and this text is actually a direct reference to the text we have for our UI. And we're going to use that later on simply to show the time. That's all it's going to be there for. Uh, we've got ourselves a couple of private variables, three private variables in fact. Float next minute, float hour, and float minute. And each of those are going to be again used to tell time. That's all this application does. All right. In the start function is where we're going to initialize everything. And uh, I initialize a couple of different things here. 
The first thing I initialize is the screen size, all right? And the screen size, uh, screen.set resolution to 200 by 200, and I set the ability to, uh, to change the screen size to false. Uh, if you hover over it, and if I hover over it here, let me see, kick in, there we go. It'll actually tell you exactly what you can do with it and what's required. So the set resolution requires a width, the height, and the ability to either full screen it or not. I said no, I don't want you to, it's gonna remain that size. All right, after that, I set the hour, the function, or sorry, the variable pair hour, to the system time of the current hour, all right? Hour equals set, or sorry, hour equals system, dot date time dot now dot hour so that is the current hour the current hour on our system okay I then set the minute in exactly the same way minute is equal to the system dot date time dot now dot minute um, those two lines basically just set up our the existing time or our, our starting time for the hour and the minute variables up here okay in turn, what I want to do with that time, with the hours and the minute, is I want to rotate, I want to rotate, let's go back here for a second, I want to rotate my clock time to the appropriate position to match that time. So all that's really doing is setting up the clock so it's got our system time, and it's setting up our clock so it matches the, the existing time on our, on our system. And that's it, all right? This has been rotated appropriately to match the actual time. Let's go back to our code. Transform dot rotation, so we're, we're changing the rotation, is equal to quaternion Euler, and I oh, uh, quaternions, I'm not going to go into the math behind quaternions. Um, I use the quaternion dot Euler to allow me to put in Euler, uh, <laughs> Euler rotations, uh, angles, uh, rather than quaternion numbers. Uh, I understand them better. All right, so I'm taking the quaternion uh, uh, Eulers, and basically, I'm only setting the, the Z rotation, all right? My X is set to zero, my Y is set to zero, and my Z is set to some number. And this is basically how much I wanna, how much I wanna rotate it, all right? Um, there are uh, 60 minutes in an hour, all right? So I'm multiplying my hour that I've received in here, so whatever it is, if it's one o'clock in the morning, it's gonna be one times 60, and I'm adding the minutes themselves, all right? And basically, I am multiplying it. I'm, I'm rotating it negative. Uh, I want to rotate in the negative direction, all right, in the clockwise direction. So I'm multiplying it by negative 0.25, all right? And I'm adding 180 degrees. The 180 degrees that I'm, uh, sorry, 180. The 180 is the original rotation that I had on the clock time. And then once again, that was set like that to ensure that I was starting at midnight, okay? so. That is the simple math in order to be able to define the rotation uh, of your actual clock face. Okay, now, there's a little bit of stuff that has to go on here. We're gonna change some things depending. Um, if, if our minute is greater than 59, then rather than count to 60, we don't want to say 60, we actually want to go back down to zero, all right? So if our minute is equal to 59, then our next minute is going to be zero. Otherwise, our next minute is going to be whatever number plus one. So that's going to give us our count, all right? That's going to give us our minute count, all right? And then we set our display. Our display text, we've set the reference to the display text right here. It's a global, uh, sorry, it's a public, uh, public variable, which means we can, we can, we'll look at that in a second. We'll look at it in the actual, uh, in the actual inspector in a second, but we're able to, to drag our text in there. Now, it's gonna set the display text, the game object dot set active. So first of all, it's gonna either set it to false in this case here. Uh, we haven't pressed the button yet. We don't want to actually show unless someone uh, clicks the button, which is the entire clock. Uh, and the display text is gonna be set to the actual system time. All right, that's how we did it. So the display set text is con contains the actual system time. System.datetime.now to string will allow you to convert the actual system time, your actual system time to a string. Okay, that's the setting of it. That's our initialization. Now what we want to do is we want to go through and we want to uh, set every minute. All right, in the update, we're going to start taking the time in the minute. So. In the update, we are setting minute once again, each time we're setting minute to the actual current minute. This does not look at seconds, all right? It does not look at seconds. We're only looking at the minute itself, okay? And we're saying if our minute is equal equal to, so it's, it's a, we're doing our if statement there, requires double equal, next minute, all right? So if the actual minute, the current minute is equal to the next minute, we've already set our next minute up here to be whatever the next one's gonna be. If minute equals 59, then next minute is equal to zero. 
and we set our hour and and once again we set our hour we, we do our transformation right here and we actually set our text all right that's all we're doing exactly the same thing we did up here we are we are setting our hour we already know our minute we're setting our hour and then we are doing our transform rotation onto on the clock rotation itself on the on the uh, clock time itself and we're setting the display if however next minute does not equal next minute then we go on and we say we go on or sorry if if however minute does not equal 59 uh, that means that it's anything else anything else than 59 it's not a special case and then we simply set our next minute to the next minute that's all we do all right minute plus one and once again we go through and we do our transformation and our display that's all we're doing all right that's the entire thing that's the guts behind this entire project all right lastly we're adding this public function this public function display time and display time is really uh, what we're going to be using to turn on our time that's it if display time is called Display touch dot game much to set active, so we're setting it equal to true. And we're setting it or, or we're setting it equal to false, depending on what state it's in. But the first click will set it equal to true, and then subsequent states will set it to either true or false, depending on what state it's in. That's it. That's the guts behind this entire thing. That's the entire Minecraft clock. Alright? Uh, and we can take a look right here in our keep time script once you save it. Once you save your keep time script, uh, you can simply drag your text and drop your text into that area there and it will automatically work appropriately. All right. Our button, as I mentioned earlier, takes on the clock time. Uh, clock time. You drag that into here. Uh, and once you do so, like if I, if I take a look here, we're going to have a bunch of different things available to us. You're going to grab your clock time and you're going to use in there the keep time display time. Keep time display time is our only uh, public function that's available. All right, so that's why um, it's available here. Only your public functions will be available here. Okay, and that is the entire thing, and that is how it works. All right, click goes off, click goes on. That's it. If you have any questions, let me know. All right, it's pretty straightforward. Let me put the code back up because I know some people are like, I didn't see the code. Let me zoom in a bit here. Uh, well, that'll, that'll fit the screen really nice right there. Let's just leave it like that. Um, I make sure, guys, I record this in HD. Uh, so if you can't see it, stop right here at this point. Stop right here at this point. This is the entire code bit right here. That's the entire, the entire script. Everything is there. Stop right here and look at it in HD. You'll be able to copy exactly what I wrote there. And let me actually, uh, I should have been doing this the whole time. Tools, options, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It is syntax and highlighting. Let me do this. Maybe it makes it easier to see. Let's try uh, nightshade. Okay. Does that make it easier to see? Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to do that for you guys, though. All right. If you, if you just stop it right here, record the code, it'll work exactly for you. Make sure you've copied exactly. There's no kind ofs or it's kind of close in code. It has to be exactly what you see here. Anyway, guys, if you have any questions, I went over that very, very quickly. And this is really just a filler video so that I can get to my actual students' awesome work uh, next week. This is a filler video for now, guys, but if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. I do not mind helping you guys out. If you're having a hard time understanding something or you want something further explained, just let me know down in the comments, all right? I try and answer back every one that comes to me. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know with a thumbs up. A thumbs down is perfectly fine if you didn't like it. Let me know why so I can make changes in upcoming videos, though. All right? Love to hear from you. Love to see your work. Show me your stuff, guys, down in the comments below. All right? Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below. And if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.